to another episode of Worst First. We're super lucky today because we are in a different podcast studio, an actual professional one that has the proper cameras and things. Um, so I'm so excited. Um, Brennan and Jake Taylor are here today on the podcast. I'm so excited because you guys have a podcast that I just did yeah. called Share Your Scare, yes. which I love because I'm so into horror shit. Yeah, it was good. Man. That's you, you all have I a talk lot of spooky about. stories, too. I do. I'm a spooky girl. You are a spooky girl. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are like, get me out of here. Yeah. Hey, fucking, Steve, uh, can, we, can we cut this? Fucking witch, get out of here. I love it. No, I know. It's like kind of crazy, but like I was asking like how you guys got into scary stuff. Like yeah. what all of a sudden where you like, I like scary stuff and you well, started doing it on your YouTube channel. Actually, you know, it kind of goes with the f- worst first. So I actually kind of, mm-hmm. you know, the first time I ever played the Ouija board and got into scariness is kind of what ultimately attracted me into, you know, wanting to play it more and which brought it into YouTube and then into podcasting. But actually I was doing a little like high school movie for my film class okay. and we we wanted to make it about a scary movie and we wanted to make it about Ouija boards so we were like we, we gotta go get a Ouija board and we gotta see if this thing actually works so we go and get a Ouija board and at first you know we bought it from Toys R Us so we didn't <laughs> think this thing's gonna work how crazy is it that they Toys R Us sell, yeah. sold Ouija boards it's insane so anyways we get this Ouija board we go up to his weird scary creepy attic and we decide that's the right place that we need to play it so it was me him and this girl and we're like alright we gotta test this real so let's ask questions about this this girl, she's not playing. It's just me and my homie. So like, let's ask questions about the girl because if, if like we wouldn't know the answer, so we couldn't be faking this. So it starts answering these questions about um about this girl. Super weird. So at that moment, we knew it was real. Anyways, we take a little break. We went back up. Just me and him now. We're like, okay, we know it's real. Now let's go try to actually play it. So we go up there together. We're asking it questions. It starts answering it. And finally, I ask it, where are you from? Right? Where are you? And the board starts to spell H. E L L, and at this moment, my heart drops to my ass. Like I literally feel like I could. You don't shit think my your friend was moving it at all? Like you guys no were way, both barely touching our, it. No way, because our 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 scaredness matched each other, Whoa. and like we he wasn't an actor, nothing like that. Like this was like we were terrified. I was I was like, bro, I'm done, I'm done. I can't play this anymore. He's like, I don't want to play this either. And I was like, we have to say goodbye. He's like, no, fuck this. So we both rip up our hands, right? Like you're not supposed to do that at all. You're supposed to say goodbye. We rip up our hands, and our other friends that were downstairs thought it would be a funny idea to shut the attic. You know, how, like how's those steps that you can pull down? They shut the attic on us so we're stuck up here i decide you know what i'm getting out of here whether i get hurt or not i jump on the attic the attic thing goes down (laughs) luckily i didn't fall but like i kind of like balanced and went down my friend follows right after me and i kid you not two seconds later the board comes flying down after us and there was nobody left up there so that was the first like my like it was it was like the worst time because it was terrifying and later on like a month later I'm telling someone else this story exactly and my nose starts bleeding. Never had a nosebleed in my life. Starts gushing down and at that moment was kind of the moment that I was like damn like this shit's real. I want to explore it more for like YouTube and stuff and let other people see it. Do you ever do you feel like something attached itself to you ever like or do you feel like you got it rid of it? I personally don't feel like anything has really like attached itself to me. Um, I do try to sage and I do try to like, you know, use positive words of affirmation. And although I try to stay very like positive in my life, you know, I always carry crystals with me. I'm yeah. surprised I don't have one on me right now, but I always have like a black onyx or something. I have yeah. like, rings with black onyx just to keep away negative energy and stuff. So luckily, I don't feel like anything is attached to me. But Jake and I have been in some very sketchy situations where something could have followed us. Like I've literally been in Japan at Suicide Forest. Yeah, like, he's gone. Did there. you guys both go there? Did I didn't go there. No. I just went to Suicide Forest. And you walked through it. Walked through it. Did in you the middle see of the bodies? Night. We we saw. We think we saw a body in the distance. We didn't want to go up to it and like do all that, but it's very possible that there was a body. A lot of people commented saying that there is a body at like the fifty minute mark of the video that we didn't see. We walked right by it. So, I mean, it was just so dark. What did you feel like when you were in there? It felt like um, just, it felt a lot of sadness Mm -hmm. and it just kind of overwhelmed you. And you kind of just kind of, that sadness just turns into like this weird fear where you're like shaking. Like you were talking about your anxiety a lot. It kind of felt like that. Like I was just shaking and I'm not, I don't usually get anxiety or anything like that. And I couldn't stop shaking. I was like, uh, like it was almost like I was cold or something, but But I wasn't. But you weren't cold. Yeah, that's like a a panic attack. Yeah. Yeah. It was literally like a panic attack all throughout this place. And I've never had one of those in my life. And it was just such a weird feeling being in there. Do they tell people not to go in there? Um, 
Yeah, like it's. I mean, it's it's a forest. Like you can go in there. And Isn't there like a park that's there, like right? Yeah, there's a for. Well, there, so there's a. It's a forest and there's a trail. Like you can walk the trail and you can do it whatever you want. Then there's this point where there's like a marker where you can't go any further. You can if you jump it like we did, but it's uh, recommended that you don't because this forest is so vast and you can't even see the sky when you're in there. It's like completely forest, covers the sky that it's it's advised not to go past this point because a lot of people go past it and get lost. So even the people that don't want to end up, you know, ending their lives in there end up dying because they, they get lost and they can't find their way out of this forest that's so massive. And you guys still went past the marker? Yes. Well, we How brought, did you know you, were, oh, you brought we, tape? We brought these little tape things to tape around trees every like 50 feet or so so yeah. that we knew where to follow our trail to go back out that was smart yeah. then there's like some psycho following you just cutting mo- them all moving them all around <laughs> <laughs> little right? demon it could have you know <laughs> just making hearts out of them and like fuck you signs like right? what it could have happened <laughs> that's it was so scary. scary what part of japan is that in that's in uh hockey i think well it's called the akiagara um forest mm-hmm. uh, i think i don't know the exact place it is it's right by mount fuji I, I, maybe i can look did it up. you go there specifically to do that we went there specifically Knowing that that was the ultimate video we were gonna make when we were out were there. Were you with Logan? No, no, oh, no, no, okay. no, 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 no,
smoke coming out of uh, one of the buildings. And we're like sitting here, like we're the only ones here. Why is there smoke? Yeah, I was like at a pile of rocks. And we just... have it on video. Like we, yeah. we were filming, you know, and we film and we could see, we could see smoke coming up. And I'm like, this is not good, Jake. I immediately had this feeling. And my mom always tells me, trust your gut, trust your gut. I had this feeling that someone was framing us and that someone was going to burn down the island and that we were the only two on the island. We were, we were the dumb charged. Americans. We were going to get, you know, framed in Italy. You saw smoke coming? Smoke, yeah. like fire. And I, I, and I was like, this Maybe is... there was homeless people that lived there. How would they get there? Yeah. It's an island 50 an island. miles out from Venice. Like there should be no one there. There's no yeah. way to get there unless you have your own boat and there was no other boats around. And anyways, we start, we start freaking out, Jake and I. We start running. Like we had to get out of this place. Like my whole thought was that we we're going to get to the guy. He's not going to be there anymore. He was planned. The, the guy that said, meet us in an hour. like a can of gasoline. He's like, oh, <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Literally, yeah. those were the thoughts running through my mind. We're running to the boat. We finally like, we're like, I, like it just it was like terrifying running through this place because now you're already scared you know you're running through an old mental institute trying to find your way out we're still filming we're still <laughs> filming this whole thing and and luckily like we got to the guy the guy and, and he wasn't a, 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 like into it at all because like we get over there he's like what's wrong what's wrong like what like what the fuck what we you guys scared doing? him he was scared he was like come on like let's go let's go uh and we ended up living like we're here today we're alive yeah, of course but that was probably like the scariest thing because it turned from something like paranormal to something so real, real yeah. you know, like, and I don't even know, maybe it was just in our imaginations, the smoke that, but it didn't, but it, it was, was on video. camera, yeah. But maybe like, the, I don't know. Yeah, so really that was like definitely the weirdest thing, because I mean, most haunted stuff that happened to us is like, something will move. Something but we will actually move saw own, something our with our own eyes, yeah. smoke coming up, so and it was like, crazy. And we had that feeling like where the hairs on your back of your neck are standing the whole time. And What's the name of this video if people want to see it on uh, YouTube? It's called um, something, it's Provelia Island. If you just look at Brennan okay. Taylor, Provelia Island, you'll find it. And uh, it was terrifying. Oh yeah. my God. So people can go watch it. Yeah. yeah Have it you guys nice. ever seen, did you know that a lot of times ghosts, they form as smoke? Like they, their apparition yes. is smoke. That's what I was yeah. thinking. Yeah. Yeah. I've actually like. Or they look like smoke, but it's actually. I've actually been so tired that I'm driving home and I, it's like a kind of, not a foggy night, but kind of. And I feel like I've seen like people going through my, when I go through my car, I go through smoke and I thought it was a person. And I'm like, is that a person or is it just smoke? And I'm tripping out, but it could have been a ghost. And yeah. I just ran them over. They can be like, they look like sometimes like dark spirits. Like people have said, like it looks like dark mm -hmm. smoke, but it's like in the shape of a person, but it looks like smoke. Yeah. Super freaking scary. Okay. So did you guys ever physically see a ghost with your own eyes? I've never actually like seen a ghost. Like I've seen little things happen, you know, mm -hmm. like something, something like, you know, the Ouija board moved to something or, you know, I hear a noise in another room when we ask for something to happen, uh -huh. but I've never seen a ghost. And I, I like, I want to, but at the same time, like, I am kind of scared of the idea of seeing a ghost yeah. face to face. But um, we have talked to people who have seen ghosts, and a lot of them say they literally look like real human beings. Yeah. Like, yeah. But then you realize they're like transparent. You're yeah. Like, oh, never like, mind. Wait a yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's pretty freaky, right? Yeah. Okay, so that was the scariest one that you guys did. One of uh, it was one of the scariest. I, like, I mean, there's a lot of scary stuff that happens to us, but that was like probably one of the top. I feel like, in my opinion. Yeah. Sure. Just because we're in a foreign country and everything. Yeah, and we don't know what. I can't happen. believe you guys wanted to do that. Like, have you gone to Salem? Have you gone I all gone around? To Salem. We've wanted to. We we were like we were getting really big on like doing all the scary stuff. Yeah. Uh, right before kind of like COVID happened, like we were traveling. We were doing a lot of food stuff too. We were doing yeah. food videos and like haunted travel type videos, but uh -huh. then COVID happened and we kind of yeah. had to take a break. But ever actually since COVID happened, I really started getting more in touch with like my religion and spirituality and stuff that I kind of wanted to stray away from scary stuff now, like uh, more like paranormal type stuff. Like I don't want to play the Ouija board anymore. I don't want to like play with my own life in a way. How many times kind of have you played with a Ouija board? Man, I play with the Ouija board way too many times. Yeah, even at count. least like a dozen times. Both yeah. of you? Yeah. Well, we've had to do it for videos. For videos. Um, and like we really actually play when we're when we're trying to do videos, we're really playing this board, you know. And, and you've gone and gotten cleansed and like had yes. your space cleansed. Yes, by I've someone. actually paid. Yeah, paid. Yeah, I paid like two hundred fifty dollars one time for a session to get like cleansed, mm -hmm. my energy cleansed. No, it's real. It's serious because you never know like 
what portal you're opening. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like you really never know. There's um there's a hill in Pennsylvania called Gravity Hill. Have you mm. guys heard of it? No, we we've heard of Gravity Hill. There's one out here too. Is there? Yeah. yeah. We actually just in recently Silmar. tried to do it. It didn't work though. Where for was us. it? In Silmar? Silmar? Yeah. Yeah. But okay, it didn't so work for us. This but. one actually works. This is in Pennsylvania and it's around where I grew up and you go up to the hill and you're like the hill is like this. Mm-hmm. And you put your car in neutral at like a spot right before the bridge and your car just gets pulled. That's crazy. Up the hill. Yeah. And it's fucking insane. We've done it. And yeah. it's really weird. Yeah, we but, tried it and we were hoping that it was going to work. But it didn't but work for you guys? Not out here, yeah. Is it the same thing where it's a hill and you put yeah. your car in neutral yeah. and it pulls the car up? Mm. So weird. Ours was just going reverse. So like, gravity, <laughs> hill is, gravity Hill is, is the real deal. Yeah. I mean, it'd be so interesting. I mean, I know it's, you know, and that's the thing is like dabbling with that stuff. And like I've had a lot of mediums and I've had a lot of like clairvoyance and psychics on my podcast and things like that. And, you know, dabbling with that stuff can be really scary mm. because, you know, spirits can, demons can mimic you know, loved ones. Right. Yeah. They can mimic, you know, people that you think like, oh, this is my grandma, but it's not. It's mm-hmm. a demon. You yeah, know? you don't and know it's what you're really bringing. It's really hard to tell the difference. Yeah. Do you guys believe in demons? Oh, for sure. Of course. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And ever since, you know, getting more into like religion and stuff, you, I realized like, you know, there's, we're here on earth for like 80, 90 years, however long yeah. you last, you know, but then after that, it's eternal. Like we were talking about on my podcast, like energy, you can't destroy it. We right. What we are, you know, it's what we are always going to be. Mm-hmm. So it's just like, I don't know, thinking about that, like the eternal afterlife. And if I if I fuck up in this life by, you know, inviting demons into it and, and all it's that. It's like, oh, you wanted to play a game? Exactly. Now Welcome to hell. Yeah. 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 It's just like, that's the stuff that I've been thinking of recently. And it's kind of strayed me away from even making these videos when things get back to normal. Like, I don't I don't think I'm going to anymore. Yeah. I mean, it's probably best not right. to because it's like you never know. I mean. When you say you're getting into religion, what do you mean by that? Like, are you practicing like? Uh, I was re- I started reading the Bible. Oh wow! Yeah, I started reading the Bible. I started, you know, uh, I have this book where it's like 40 years of devotions, mm-hmm. and I just read every single day. There's like a new one, and I'm just yeah. like started, you know, being more receptive and right. open to that. Before I would kind of just say like, oh, I don't, you know, I don't believe, you know, just because I didn't have any hard proof. But I realized like, if you want, like, what makes life worth living is believing in something, you mm-hmm. know. And if I just was gonna pass it off because I don't have any hard proof, then I'm just, what am I even living for, you know? So I kind of just opened myself up to more of ideas and stuff. And you know, I feel like it's praying and stuff has really actually helped me um, just get through my everyday life and praying for strength and whatnot. Mm-hmm. So I really, I just. There's no reason not to believe. For Did me, you guys grow up with religion? Yeah. Yeah. We grew up Catholics, <laughs> um, but I don't, I'm, I'm not going to like sit and talk bad about a religion, but like, I feel like I resonate more with Christianity mm-hmm. more than Catholicism. Yeah. I feel like it's like I wouldn't even put like a certain religion on it. Like I believe in a higher power. Mm-hmm. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Right. But I don't know what it is. Exactly. Same thing. Yeah. And what do you guys think about all like the stuff that's come out with aliens? Like how does oh, that like, play man. into what? Don't you get know? me started. No, I want to get you started. Get started. I want to talk about it. I don't even know what I believe, to be honest. But I honestly believe more on the alien side than like the God side. Because okay. I feel like I feel like if we really think about it, maybe the aliens are the gods that we're worshiping. That's another thing. You know theory. what I mean? It's That's the whole thing theory. on that. But I don't know. I think uh, I think everything that has happened, like, let me retract myself. On Brennan's podcast, or on our podcast, we talked about the frequency thing. Mm-hmm. They were saying that maybe the aliens are like on a different frequency here with us now. Like live, they could be in this room just watching mm-hmm. us, you know? Or living a whole other life at the And same have time. no idea, exactly. Yeah, right, they don't match because yeah. we're on different frequencies. Yeah, I definitely think there's life on that other planets have you guys ever googled pictures of angels of what real angels look like no no they're actually so google it right now it's actually so terrifying some of them really like when you think of an angel you think of like the traditional angel that you see on your christmas tree Uh, where it's like a person with wings i have a tattoo of one right (laughs) when you google like like, type in like type in different types of angels because there's actually several different types of angels yeah and the only reason why we resonate so much with the angel that's a person with wings is because that's what they're showing us Mm -hmm. like this is the most relatable thing to us that doesn't scare us but if you go to images you're going to see a bunch of really terrifying images um one of them is a bunch of feathers that's almost in a circle with eyes all throughout of it there's like animals they're all different names there's animals there's all different shapes like i mean the whole angels aliens like who knows you know and not to like you know 
disturb anyone's right, religious yeah. beliefs, but I feel like it is all intertwined. Mm-hmm. I mean, just to think how big the galaxy is and yeah. how much is out there. And now we're starting to realize, you know, I mean, if we haven't already at this point, that there's 100% life out oh. there beyond oh, us. Sure. I yeah. mean, the fact that we would ever think that we're the only ones is like ignorant. It's ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. it's absolutely ignorant. See, but then that, I mean, not to step on people that are religious, doesn't that step on the whole religious thing that they're saying that... God created Adam. God created Adam and Eve. Doesn't that? Go well, they like, say like cut- God created man, um, which doesn't mean that like we weren't created. You yeah. know what I mean? Like it doesn't mean that we weren't created, but that also doesn't mean that something else wasn't created. You yeah. know, like somewhere else or created itself. Right. Or, yeah, it just evolved. That's true. Yeah. I mean, even think about like the pyramids. How we have all the same structures all over the world, and like we didn't have cell phones back then to be like, yo, let's all make pyramids. Someone had to like come down and teach someone how to make a pyramid and how we're all going to do it you know what i mean and what's the pyramid even for and how did they move yeah the stone, all right? those stones yeah, that are saying, hundreds uh-huh. of thousands of pounds back in the day without forklifts yeah without you know like they said like they used like pull pulley methods and whatnot but it still like, doesn't make still, sense it's like it would take yeah. so many people yeah. and so much strength to move those and build them up to the top right i know and know? they're pointing to why are they pointing up? You know, they're like channeling energy to the to space to someone else. You know, has it's anyone, all weird. Has anyone gone inside? Is, are you able to go inside? Someone can. You yeah. guys should do that on your next yeah. your next. Um, this thing's cool. YouTube video. I mean, if you're getting into religion, you know, you can go into the tomb where Jesus yeah. was. You know, held. That'd be crazy. Before he was crucified. Yeah. I want to go know, to Jerusalem. You, can, you could go to Jerusalem. Yeah. You can go and experience it. You can touch the stone that he was laid wow. on. I mean, there's so many cool things that you can do. And um, I mean, I've watched videos on it. And it's like even just watching the videos, like I feel like I could smell the air yeah. in there. And it's like it's so surreal. Like this is where it happened. Mm-hmm. You know, this is yeah. what was written in the scripture. This is where it mm-hmm. was. You know, you can touch all these things and see all these things. Um. Yeah, I mean, I just think it's so interesting. And then there's also like, have you guys seen those monoliths popping up? Mm-hmm. Have yeah. you seen that? I have seen that. That's, that's crazy too. Um, I know, I, I don't know. The first one was crazy. Yeah. After that, I feel like people might have just hopped Created on a trend. Yeah. And just like were some tree artists. Didn't one of those YouTubers make one? Duke Squad or something. Yeah, yeah. I one think. of these YouTubers made made a video saying like they they claimed that they st- like made it like it was their idea yeah. to do it. And, the like, original it, one or the all of them? I think the one in like San, uh, Florida or yeah, something yeah, like that. Yeah, one. I don't know. They're pretty crazy looking. Yeah. Uh-huh. Like the silver. If you guys Google these monoliths that have been popping up everywhere, it's pretty freaking weird. It's super um, weird. But not only that, it's like the Israeli army came out and Joe Rogan posted about it and said. Yeah, extraterrestrials exist. Oh, yeah, like I they came out and actually said it. And yeah. so it's kind of like, it's not even about believing anymore. It's just about, you know, why or haven't we seen them? Why haven't we experienced them? I mean, some people have. Yeah. Um, I th- The reason why in the article it said that they're, they know that humans will freak out. And yeah, they don't want to scare us. Well, as time goes on, have you have you realized this like how much crazy information is being withheld from us? Like, for example, recently, maybe a couple months ago, the CIA released like declassified information about um, this program they were doing where people it was like a couple of really power like uh, meditation you know monks or something they would like close their eyes and they would get into a secret bunker that was like millions of or thousands of miles away and they would like draw out the schematics of this whole building and they would tell like the CIA exactly where they where a person that was captive was put and then they would go there and they would find the person in that exact place and like all this is like stuff that we you know we'll see in a movie or something we think that's too far fetched from reality but in reality it's actually happening I know that's yeah. really weird if you guys start looking up the stuff that's been declassified lately mm-hmm. there's also another one about um, that none of this is real that this whole world is a simulation oh. there's like a CIA de- I was watching Elon Musk talk yeah. about that last night there's a that whole freaks me out. CIA declassified file about how this is all a simulation that we are just living within our own reality of like what my perception of reality is what your perception of reality is and it's all a simulation you can read about it and it shows like all the diagrams about Mm -hmm. like where we are within it and then it's all just like 
you know, and all do, and time doesn't exist. Yeah. Like everything is happening at once in different air, in different on different planes. It's That's just crazy. like a mind. That is fuck. crazy. You know, before before like I was really in, before I got into religion more, I was I used to always just really think reincarnation was the thing. Like, yeah. I thought when when you die, it was like a video game. I mm-hmm. felt like life was like a video game. Like when you die, you went that flash of white light was really your birth. You're coming back out. You know, you're you're being birthed again because you have to be recycled. I mm-hmm. I thought you know and. And it makes sense in a way if you really kind of think about it like that. But um, do you guys think that your human spirit can be recycled into like a dog or like an, an animal? Or do you think it's strictly human to human? I think it could be. I mean, Brennan's dog is straight up like an old man. I think my dog, it was a human at one point. Like yeah. He really does sit and understand. And like, I feel like I could talk to him and he like really will understand me. Do you guys you know? want to see something really scary? Yeah. Okay. So. We're going to take a quick break, guys, and we'll be right back with Jake and Brennan Taylor on Worst First, and I'm going to share something really terrifying okay. with them. Stay tuned. Hello, everyone, and thank you for tuning in to another episode of Worst Firsts. I would like to share an offer with you, and this is a really big offer. I mean, this is some crazy savings here. So I'm sure you've heard of HelloFresh, um, but have you heard of Green Chef? So as you guys know, Green Chef is now owned by HelloFresh with a wider array of meal plans to choose from, including paleo, keto, vegan, vegetarian. There's something for everyone. And I personally love switching between the brands. And now my listeners can enjoy both brands at a discount with me. Green Chef is the first USDA certified organic meal kit delivery company. So you can enjoy eating clean ingredients that you can trust that are seasonally sourced for peak freshness. The awesome thing about Green Chef is that they also have a lot of different options for you, whether you're keto, paleo, vegan, vegetarian. You can just head to their website, greenchef.com, and check out all the different options for you, which is amazing because not everybody's doing the same thing right now. Not everybody wants to eat meat, and so it's really cool to be able to do that. Um, The best thing that I love about them is also that they are a sustainable meal kit, means that they offset 100% of the direct carbon emissions and plastic packaging of every box. You don't have to worry about ruining the environment with the food and how it's getting to you. Okay, so why meal delivery kits? Why not just go to the store? Well, number one, going to the store right now isn't like the safest thing. Second of all, I feel like it takes the guesswork out of it. I mean, personally, my husband and I love going to the website and picking out our meals. They have pictures of all the meals that you can make on there. Not only that, they come together super easily. We did like a Kung Pao shrimp the other night. It was fantastic and uh, came together in less than 30 minutes, which we love. And the pictures, obviously, that show you how to put it together are very helpful because I'm not like the greatest reading rainbow over here. Um, So... How does this benefit you? Well, right now, for Worst First listeners, you get $90 off your first Green Chef order, including free shipping. All you have to do is head to greenchef.com slash 90worst and use code 90worst to get $90 off, including free shipping. Again, that's greenchef.com slash 90worst and use code 90worst to get $90 off, including free shipping. I mean, $90, guys. That's like almost $100 for those that are math whizzes out there. Um, yeah, so get y'all eat on. Get y'all $90 worth of free food. Greenchef.com slash 90worst, code 90worst to get $90 off and free shipping. Enjoy. Okay, we're back. Okay, so we were talking about reincarnation, right, and how mm-hmm. possibly your animals could be people, you know, you could your soul could go in an animal, that kind of thing. Um, So there's this app called Cartoon Me. Have you guys heard of it? I haven't, no. Uh So it's this app where you take a picture of yourself and it turns you into a cartoon. Okay. And so I was doing it with my husband and we were like, this is so funny. You know, like, this is great. I love it. Let's try it on the dog. Mm -hmm. And so I was thinking, (laughs) I was thinking it's going to take the dog and turn her into a funny cartoon Uh dog. Instead, it took the dog and made this. <gasps> oh my god, that's terrifying. Oh, that's so that, terrifying. That is like a nightmare. What do you mean? I thought it in my and I'll share this with you guys. I think it captured her soul and it does three different versions of the cartoon. This one's mouth's bleeding. 
Oh my God. And I think it captured her soul of who she was in another life. This old lady. Oh my God. I can actually see the resemblance. This old lady. In a way. Is in the soul. Her soul, I feel like, is in the dog. Oh my God. And this is off of a dog's photo. And why are all the faces like. Have you tried it again and it will do it the same pictures? I haven't tried it again because I was so freaked yeah, out. Yeah, that's free. The first photo scared me. Yeah. It's a, really disturbing, yes. isn't it? And I'm going to post all these so you guys can see them. Um, but yeah, I mean. What is this app called? I it's called Cartoon Me. Yeah, and I'm let me know scared. if it does no, it. Because this is what it typically does. So it shows you as a cartoon okay. in four okay. different it's ways. It's usually fun and cute. It's usually fun yeah. and cute. Uh-huh. It's, it's, I think it's actually even by Pixar. Okay. Or Disney yeah. made the app. And so I was like, let me just do it to my dog and get cute cartoon yeah. versions of my dogs. And instead it turned her into this fucking terrifying old oh, woman who looks like so she's sur- lived in the plague times. Oh, yes. Something like that. So part of me like agrees with you where I think that like, you know, reincarnation is a thing. And then I, I talk about this all the time on the podcast. And I've had like a, a medium on where she said that. You know, we do keep coming back to Earth until we learn all the lessons that we've needed to learn. And then once we've learned all the lessons that we needed to learn, then we can move on. Yeah. So then we move up to spirit guides Mm -hmm. then we move up to angel. You know, it just takes a really long time, you know. But if you don't learn everything that you need to learn while you're here, you got to come back. And, you know, the craziest thing that she told me is that we choose our life. Really? So it's so interesting to me because it's like, you know, people that have really hard lives – They chose that. That's what she says because it's like their soul knew, knows what lessons it needs. Mm. And so it goes, okay, this life will give me those lessons, even though it's going to be really hard. Right. You know, and for those of you that are listening to this that are in really tough situations or in really hard, you know, situations, this is a life apparently that you chose because you needed this. You needed to learn these lessons. Your soul needed this. Yeah. I have a friend who has a disability and he said, like I asked him, I was like, "How do you, like how how do you feel about this?" And he's like, "I feel I feel fine. I know God did this to me because uh, He knew I could handle it, basically." Wow. And I was like, "Damn!" Like He knew I could handle this more than the normal person could. What is his disability? If you don't mind uh, me asking, it's, he suffers with dwarfism. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was like, "Damn!" Like that's that's the realest thing I ever heard because like I don't know if I could like seeing him like I don't know if I could live like yeah. It's like. That just shows how evolved his soul is, yeah. right? Like he's so got his soul, soul sure. is so evolved that it was like, okay, I'm so super evolved. This is like another trial for me, right. you know? And his looks like he is yeah. so evolved in his soul that like he knows like this was specific for him to yeah. choose for him. I mean, I know a girl who um, she was she's beautiful, like cheerleader, blonde you know, walking around her whole life and then went on a ski trip with her parents. And she went off like a, 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 just a kid jump and she fell the wrong way and she broke her spine and she became paralyzed from the neck down for the rest of her life. And I say the same thing to her. And I said, you know, do you ever get angry or resentful or like whatever? And she's the most positive, happy person in the entire world. Like they told her, you know, you're never going to be able to move your arms. You're never going to be able to, you know, walk. And she can't walk, but she actually did regain, like, some mobility wow. in her That's arms. Awesome. And she just says, like, no, you know, like, when it happened, like, of course, your first thing is, like, oh, my life is over. But then she's, like, something just happens to you where you you accept mm-hmm. it and you learn to live with it and she's so happy now and she's like engaged and she's like living her best life that's crazy because i i've seen other people how like i've watched testimonies about you know people that are paraplegics or something like that Mm -hmm. and a lot of them are you it seems like happier than the everyday person who Mm -hmm. has all their motor functions and it's because they realize that there's there's more to life than these material things that we're chasing Mm -hmm. you start to realize like oh shit like there's there's more, you know? There is more. I mean, sometimes it takes, I think, something like that for people to stop. And, and wake realize, up and yeah. open your eyes, yeah. And be grateful, you know? Like, there's so many people in the world who have so much money and so many things, and then they wake up every day and they're mad, and they want more, mm-hmm. and they keep going, well, only if I had this, or only if I had that, then I'd be happy. Then I'd be happy. Mm-hmm. But they don't realize, like, that's not where it's coming from. Right. Like, it has to come from you, you know? For sure. Haven't you kind of felt like that in your life with oh, yeah. your own success? Yeah. Like, where it's not, it's never enough. 
Yeah, all yeah. the time. And I think that's something that I, I suffer with because, you know, I, I, I'm extremely blessed to be living the life that I'm living. Um, but yeah, there is times and I feel like it, it happens to everyone because I feel like we all just get caught up in our own every single day life that we're like, you know, we're used to the same way we are like for example you yourself like you're used to living your life you know mm -hmm. like you're used to your your status and whatnot that it almost just kind of seems like nothing anymore to you but to someone else it's a huge deal but to you it's just it's really nothing so you forget about the feeling of how long it took you to get to that place and you, you forget all that and you just keep wanting more and i think it's like it's one of those the seven deadly sins it's the greed you know 100 percent. and isn't it kind of surreal as i was thinking about the other day i was thinking about back in the day when I was 18 and I had a thousand dollars in my bank mm -hmm. account and I thought I was so rich. Oh my God, yeah, yeah. same. I had like $3,000 And you were like, I was like, I'm, I'm rich, yeah. I'm the richest person in the world. Yeah. And it's just so interesting, like I will never forget that. Right. You know what I mean? It, and, and you remember that, you know, too. And, and, I, and I look at people these days and everyone who's struggling, especially like with what's going on, and I'm just like, fuck, like you just have to be grateful. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's mm -hmm. it's really, I mean, do you guys think with everything that's happening that the world is gonna go back to normal ever? Like what are your thoughts right now? Because yeah. Gavin Newsom just lifted restaurants in LA. He yeah. just opened mm -hmm. up the, is it just restaurants again or I'm, is it I'm not sure, but I know, order? I know restaurants are open. Yeah. So. so everything, yeah. so it's, it's it was kind of interesting. It happened right after Biden got. Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, not to get political, not but, at all. But it makes zero but sense. But it was just kind of like right yeah. after Biden got into presidency, he was like, "Okay, now everything's Done. back open. Yeah. COVID and, doesn't exist anymore." And on the news today, they said the CDC said one mask isn't enough to stop COVID anymore. No. So you have to wear a double mask, but restaurants are open. I, it just doesn't make sense to me. But and by the way, did you guys know those people that wear those neckerchiefs, those uh, like yeah. masks that are like just neck? They're like yeah, 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 uh, yeah, those, whatever. The scarf. They actually one. spread COVID more than protect really? it because when you cough, it actually breaks the particles into uh, smaller particles uh, through that uh, neckerchief because it doesn't have any kind of real protection yeah, in it. Wow. So you really should be wearing an N95 mask if you can. Not going to you know force that upon anyone. Um, but yeah, I mean, like, and the thing is, it's so weird, like, people who are, like, COVID deniers, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, have you guys known anyone? Yeah, I, I know people that say yeah. it's fake and stuff. But well, I, and I also know people that have had it. Yeah. yeah. Did you know anyone passed from it? I don't. No one that passed, fortunately. Yeah. yeah. I So I only know, like, two people that have actually died from it. Oh. Um, that was my, my friend's uncle. He passed away from it. And uh, another friend's grandma passed away from it. But that's yeah. the only people I know. And they were older, but. I, I was I actually followed this one chick on Instagram and she's she's like a nurse or something so mm -hmm. she was posting about how she got like vaccinated because she's a nurse and I mean I'm not I'm not gonna like say like I'm for it or against it or anything but like in in her post she was talking about how like the vaccination made her feel one she has to get two there's two yeah. stages of the vaccinations so it's two different vaccinations that you have to get and she said the first one for the first few days made, made her, her so sick. Made you sick. Yes, and yeah. made her like fog brain. My and mom got I was like, it. Why would I want to uh -huh. do that? My mom got the Moderna vaccination and she called me the day after she got it and she's like, I feel like the sickest I've been in my whole life. And she yeah. couldn't get out of bed. It's crazy. And she was like, I feel like I have the gnarliest flu that anyone like could ever give me. And my mom's been a nurse for over yeah, 30 years. Scary. And she, she, ha she had to call out of work and stay in bed for about a week. Wow. And now she's okay. But that was just the first one. Yeah. She hasn't even gotten the second one yet, yeah. you know? I honestly don't think like the world can go back to normal. I feel like we're so much smarter as civilians and we're like trying to know the truth about everything that we kind of don't settle for anything. Like the aliens, we want to know like the mm -hmm. truth about it, you know? And I feel like, I don't know, we don't, I necessarily don't believe half the stuff that the news comes out with, you know what I mean? And I don't know. No, I totally I agree know. with but you. But think about this. A couple of months ago, <laughs> TikTok was showing all of the most raw information that you could ever find. Crazy, crazy as shit. Yeah. And, then, and, 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 and then Trump deleted. said, and Trump said, we, we, we're, we're shutting it down TikTok, unless yep. you sell it to the United States. And as soon as after that happened, they all fucking disappeared. It's all gone. All those videos that yes. I saved about gone. like- Time travel, all uh -huh. kinds of crazy shit. All these documents that were un the released CIA documents, all, all shit, crazy. all got deleted. 
crazy Isn't shit. Isn't that kind of an, kind of strange? Yeah, it's like they don't want us to know, but it's just like at the same time they're being so obvious about everything. Yeah, you know, like it's like we can like it's like we're looking at this computer screen, but they're saying, oh no, the computer screen is not really there. It's yeah. like what do you mean? It's right there. You know, like we're seeing all this information, but they're denying it. They're just trying to avoid like mass pandemonium because right. if they if if our government comes out and says, yeah, aliens are real people will lose their fucking shit. Especially like really religious people mm -hmm. are gonna lose their shit. Yeah. And then like people are just gonna have war about it. Um, there was a TikTok that this girl posted um, and her dad has was a retire, is a retired spy mm -hmm. for the US government. And she said to her dad, you know, dad, what do you think the next war is gonna be? And he said, it's gonna be a civil war. It's gonna be a war here within wow. ourselves, mm -hmm. with the United States of like, People, you know, I think it's going to be people believing, people not believing. Yeah, stuff I mean, crazy the, happening. The, the, the I, I truly feel like the government has too much power. Like, you know, like I was just seeing something recently about like Nancy Pelosi buying all these stocks and stuff oh, before, yeah. like for a year in advance and stuff. Like, obviously, they, it's like insider trading. That's it's just the same not thing fair, Martha you know? Stewart went to jail for. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it's like, yeah, people know. Yeah, you know? I mean, she... She bought a bunch of Tesla because of Biden's going to do his electric vehicle thing that he just and announced. She bought you know? it for 2023, like at a $500 point. Like it's at $900 now, so she's yeah, already so making. she's already understanding that it's going to either drop or it's going to split well, she, again. Yeah, she bought it that it was going to go up. Yeah, yeah, I don't yeah. know what she bought it at, but either way, like it doesn't make sense. Like that they're like they just have too much power, especially inside. And I feel like that's what's going to cause eventually the civil war is that these people are because I, I, I want to revolt, but I'm not going to be the only one, you know. <laughs> I mean, look at all those people that went into the Capitol building. Uh, that, the, was that was way too easy. Yeah. yeah. Like, but, that was But then you freaky. see the conspiracy theories about how they were just basically let in. Letting them in. Yeah. Like, there's like, people being like, come on in. I don't know. Yeah. The whole thing was really there's weird. There's a lot of me. weird shit going on, guys. And I feel like it's just going to keep getting weirder. And I mean, especially, like, with COVID coming out and then, like, you know, the, there's a new strain. Every yeah. five minutes, there's a it's South African strain. There's a new strain in London that's like way more contagious. I mean, it's just going to be like the yeah. flu. You know, but then the you have Miami open and everyone's clubbing out Where there. Where does that make sense? I honestly, this is, could be the biggest conspiracy theory, but what if we leave the United States and it, the world's normal and we've just been like put in this bubble and thinking that COVID exists? But I'm, there is COVID in other places. Yeah, I know, I'm just saying. What if yeah. that was a conspiracy? <laughs> like, what if I, did see, I did see that in Australia, they've had no COVID. For, They're starting yeah. to get some again. They're starting Are they? Yeah. Um, but they I was were like, like we the should first go to Australia. Who, they were yeah. like the first one who did like the real lockdown, and then um, they had no cases. But then it started coming back. Yeah, they really just got to stop people from traveling. That would be like the best. If way they to did stop just it. close all the travel for yeah. like two months, if they I just shut like... down the world for two weeks. Yeah, and, be gone. and we're Completely. the worst here in California because everyone just leaves to go party, and, and no then... one listens. No, and yeah. and I mean, I mean, also just in America, no one listens. Yeah. We're like my rights, right. my guns, yeah. my this. Like well, we don't. Another thing is like I have I know so many people that literally will just fly to Miami to party then fly back to california and like they're probably bringing the, the virus or they'll go to tulum mexico you know and like i have so many people that and they, they don't like they say that in la you have to do a quarantine for 10 days when you it's come like but yeah. no one's actually doing it because i know friends who go straight from mexico to here and they're out you know walking the streets it's, doing such, a, they please. it's such a shame like i have a friend who literally sends me video every night of him at like a rager it's crazy. in la yeah they still like have a house like... party with like hundreds of people with no masks on and just bumping and i'm like why are you there yeah. and he's like i don't i'm i'm immune and i'm like okay <laughs> yeah it's crazy <laughs> i mean who knows like what to believe i mean i truly do believe that covid was created mm -hmm. as you know biological warfare like it was created oh, to sure. be something and it probably wasn't even finished and it just accidentally got out someone well, they were working in the beginning on it that it was patent patented, yeah patented yeah like there's a you can look it up like coronavirus patent like and you can only patent something that's man-made so why is there a patent on, on the coronavirus that's so fucked yeah up. yeah and you can my, look it up because it's public information my brain can't even handle it i don't know we'll go into a spiral hole of <laughs> we're just getting into like such a dark <laughs> we're like conspiracy theories now <laughs> i should just change my podcast to like <laughs> right? worst first conspiracy theory there you go what's like, the worst one you've i heard? mean but it's almost like when do you draw the line between it being a conspiracy theory and it being real like it's like you know there's just so much we don't know yeah i'm, I'm know? definitely scared for the upcoming months because i just feel like you know 
like you know people are gonna are getting smarter and the government is just being more blatantly obvious with things and you know if it just disappears like that like yeah, everyone's or, gonna be pissed because look how much money everyone has yeah. lost and not made and you know I don't think it's gonna died. disappear now did you hear about those apps called parlor there is parlor and there is another app called signal parlor was this app that was like unbiased like anything goes on there like you can make your own and you can just like talk about whatever you want and people follow it and stuff so like it's unbiased by like TV or anything like that and they shut it down like Biden shut it down or I don't know someone did right when they like uh, the inauguration happened so like the app's offline and you can't even use it anymore so it's just like weird stuff like that. Like because people no were sense. on there talking about like, like real stuff. They yeah, want. yeah. Like, like I heard a lot of stuff about like censorship. Uh, well, like when they, I mean, like there was like a lot of censorship stuff about freedom of speech and like that people were weren't having their freedom of speech because like if you were to talk about COVID or something and like say something fake, you know, like they would pop up on Instagram like this is fact, truth, or that yeah. happens. All, my, yes. all the time. So it's like they're they're taking away our freedom of speech by not allowing us to say what we want. So I guess that app just allows you to say whatever you yeah, want. It, was, it doesn't block anything. And like, so they took it down. They shut it down. Wow. Yeah. Apple store took it off like their, it was their crazy. App store. So yeah. my doc, my doctor's in Tarzana and he's a really good doctor and he has had like over a hundred patients with COVID and he's treated all of them and none of them have died. And he came up with like the perfect combination of things to treat them. And he posted it on Facebook and he got banned from Facebook. No way. He was like, attention other doctors. Like, this is what I've been using for my patients. And all, almost all of his patients are elderly. I'm like his youngest patient. And he hasn't lost one person to COVID. Wow. And he had come up with this perfect combination of different things. And he posted it on Facebook to tell other doctors. And they banned him from Facebook. Wow. Well, that's like something similar to, uh, I don't know if you ever heard of him. Um, Nipsey Hussle was actually making a, a documentary about him, but his name is Dr. Sebi. And, oh, I've heard of that guy. Yeah, so he was this guy who, who was a really genius man. And he believed in like, you know, uh, traditional, like not traditional medicine, but like real herbs and stuff yeah. like that to heal you and such. And he was always a big believer in saying like, never eat cauliflower because it's man-made. If it's not cauliflower, yeah. Man-made? If it's not green, doesn't come from like the earth. Like it's it's white, which means they they man made it in a like they man made the seeds, which then grow from the earth, obviously. But it's not really a real thing. Anyways, he found the cure to HIV. Right, he published that he found the cure to HIV in the New York Times, and the government came and sued him because there he was putting false information out there. And he was like, it's not false information. He brought all the people that he cured of HIV into the court, won the case that he actually did uh, cure it a couple weeks later, ends up dead. Once they found out that he actually knew uh, the, the cure and that he could save people. Yeah, and then Nipsey Hussle was doing a, was documentary, doing a documentary on about it, him. And then he ended up dead. Dead. Big Pharma is the scariest. So terrible Because they want to keep people sick. Yeah, Big like Pharma there's definitely wants been to, a cure for cancer out there that they won't tell people. Big Pharma wants to keep people sick. I mean, there was also that 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 story of this guy, and I'm going to butcher this, but people can look this up, is the, the guy who um, created a cure to the like opioid epidemic for people that are heroin addicts. Oh, really? That like the needles now that are to be made, once you inject it, it goes inside and, and breaks so you can't use it again. So uh, that like sp- mm. lessens the spread of HIV, uh, AIDS, and also like helps end the opioid em- epidemic of people keep using these needles, right? So he created this this needle that like once you use it, you can't use it again. And so he went and got it patented and this big pharmaceutical company went to him and was like, oh my God, we want to help you. We want to help you end the opioid epidemic. We want to buy your patent. We're going to distribute it worldwide. And he was a user himself, so mm-hmm. he ended up get, get, coming clean. And you know, this was like a way that, that he like helped get over it. Was but he was a scientist as well, and so he thought like, oh my god, I'm doing such a good thing. Like they're gonna buy it and they're gonna distribute it. They bought the patent from him and destroyed it. Why? That's, That's crazy. crazy. And then he killed himself. He overdosed. No he killed way. himself because like. They don't want you to get better. I mean, then I'll even say this because I'm an antidepressant. I've been on it since I was 16, okay? I started, when I first got put on it, I was put on it because I was um, cutting and I was really depressed when I was younger. And so they put me on this antidepressant called Effexor, XR, okay? I started taking it. First couple weeks, I didn't really notice anything. And then, like, slowly I noticed that, like, you know, I was less depressed. I wasn't as anxious, that kind of thing. But I didn't really realize, like, what it was doing to my brain. Fast forward a couple years later, I was like, you know, I want to try to get off of it. I want to see how I am 
now because mm-hmm. I'm happy. I felt like I wasn't happy because I was where I was in my life and like the situation, my environment. So I was like, I wanted to get off of it. So it was like, I got put on it at 16 at like 26. I tried, I slowly weaned myself off of it. I w- was with, worked with my psychiatrist. I took, um, I did what was called a Prozac bridge because this is one of the hardest antidepressants to get off of. Basically your brain starts like zapping itself and then you get really dizzy, you throw up, like all this stuff. It's like, like a, I've had friends that were on heroin that di- that were on also Effexor, and they said Effexor withdrawal was worse wow. than heroin. Um, so I'm weaning myself down. I'm using 10 milligrams of Pro-tra- Prozac with it as I take the beads out to help balance so that my brain doesn't, like, you know, get all weird because right. your brain's used to receiving the serotonin, right? So I finally, after a year weaning down, I took an entire year to wean down. I got off of it, right, completely. Then I stopped taking the Prozac within a week and then a week later is when i told you i couldn't walk straight i couldn't like leave my house i was shaking all the time and before i was on this antidepressant i wasn't shaking all the time yeah i had panic attacks like maybe like once or twice a month but i wasn't having them every day i was having like 15 panic attacks a day wow no matter what i ate what i drank when i moved i was shaking Mm -hmm. like a leaf and i called my doctor and i was like what is going on he's like well give it two weeks see what happens right Two weeks later, same thing. I was taking Benadryl like by the bucket loads just to calm my nerves because my fight or flight was so intense and I couldn't leave my house. I didn't want to, I couldn't function. And I was not like that before I got on it. And so I did an entire year off of this drug, okay? Hoping that my brain would heal itself, you know, you know, taking nothing, just, you know, Benadryl for right, like shaking, it was, you know, learn to create, it's a serotonin again. It never got better. Wow. And I ended up, like I said, so that was when I was doing my vines and then I ended up becoming successful on vine and I had I, I had to go meet to meetings and yeah. meet people and do shows and things like that. I was throwing up and like so, my anxiety was so bad and I was never that way mm-hmm. before, you know. I, I went to school for years before without, you know, throwing up and stuff and so I gave in and got back on it and guess wow. what? Than two weeks of being back on it. You're fine. Fine. Yeah. They make wow. these drugs so that you're stuck. Right. You know what I mean? They don't make them because they want you to be better forever. Right. They want you to be better, but also stuck. Yeah, so they're formula- formulated so that it doesn't cure you, that you need it. So you have to pay for it forever to keep put money mm-hmm. in big pharma's pocket. What What would it be worth if you got better? Right. If you didn't have to take that drug your whole life, you know, yeah, and I and I buy brand, yeah. so because for some reason the generic for me isn't as good, it makes mm-hmm. me sick. Brand is four hundred dollars a month. Wow. Yeah. Because insurance doesn't cover it. So, if they aren't getting that from me every month, what what would they do for the rest of their lives? That's all they care about. It's so corrupt. It's crazy. They don't care about help Mm-mm. healing you. No, they don't want you to be better. That's like my grandma. Like she suffers from dementia. Mm-hmm. Um, and like, she was just like it was just the start of it. And like we took her to the doctors and stuff, and she had to start getting uh, like a lot of different med- medications for it. And the medications have drastically like aged her. Aged her like her yeah. dementia. Like she's literally was perfectly fine up up like mid, like two months ago. And yeah, then we the, see her like every, we have. My, it's my mom, my uncle, and my sister, um, her, her sister. So we all do like a, a month and take care of my grandma. So we'll, we won't see her for like two months because she's with the other family. And then we see her and she looks like five years older within she like can't, two she months. She doesn't remember like anything yeah, now. Like, like a hundred times worse than she was. And, and then the like, medicine will make her, one of the medicines that she takes makes her super drowsy. And or she sleep doesn't, all day. Yeah, and if she doesn't take this medicine, she has to take this one. And then it's just like, it's killing her. It's like she would have been better not taking anything. Yeah. Yeah. So they di- diagnosed her with dementia and then put her on the meds and then yes. all of a sudden she And all declined. of a sudden now she's getting worse. Yeah. Like she worse. wasn't even that bad. Yeah, and then like, they, the moment she got on it, it just went straight down. It's crazy. crazy. I just don't, you know, and it's really sad to me because it all, like you said, comes down to greed. And I don't know how those people sleep at night. I don't either. I really don't. I mean, they in their cushy mansions and, you know, they're so wealthy, the people that are behind all the pharmaceuticals. They're some of the wealthiest people in the world. Yeah, but they like they keep you sick, right? You know? I, and I I don't even know like what has to happen for like it almost needs to, we need like a, a modern day Paul Revere to come out and you know and stop these big pharma's and all that you know because yeah. I I don't know what it's gonna have to happen. Stop for... formulating drugs that hurt people. That are like killing people. Yeah. Effexor is actually banned 
in Canada. Wow. It's banned in a lot of other countries because of what it does to you. Like you get stuck on it. Uh-huh. And eventually I'm scared they're going to ban it in the US and then what am I going to do? Go through like the gnarliest withdrawal yeah. of my life and never be normal again. Right. You That's know like what also I mean? like Oxycontin, right? Yeah. Like same thing with that. Like they had it give they were giving it to everyone for basically free in the beginning and then they slowly just stopped and now people were trying to like get it, pay for it, then that yeah. helped drug addicts became it's, it's the opioid epidemic's insane. I mean, insane. it's all insane to be honest. Like it's like, you know, it's crazy just the the way the world is, and all you can do is just be careful. Like I tell all my listeners, the people who are depressed and they haven't ever been on an antidepressant, I'm like, do everything, try everything you can before you get on one, and then like the most gentle ones are Prozac and like Lexapro. Like those are the probably the most gentle ones that are easy to get off of if you're. You know, Mm -hmm. you don't want to be on it eventually. Like those ones are the ones, only ones that I've heard that people don't have the hardest time getting off of, but pretty much all the other ones, it's like a fucking nightmare. So I always suggest people just try the alternative route, you know, 5-HTP, SAMe, try, and I wish I knew these things back then. I didn't know, Mm -hmm. you know, my parents didn't know. So yeah, fuck, I mean, Worst first. <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> worst first everything. Oh, my yeah. God. You guys, thank you so much thank for you. being on the pod. And make sure to follow them and check out um, their podcast, Share Your Scare. Because I know my audience loves scary shit. So it's like, fuck, they're going to totally love Share Your Scare. <laughs> and to follow you guys, Jake and Brendan Taylor, you guys have separate accounts yes, on yeah. Instagram. Follow you guys on Instagram. I'm going to put their handles below and tag them. I'm also going to share those scary photos of my dog. Yeah, that I showed them. Oh, it's gonna give me the nightmares. cartoon me app. Very terrifying. <laughs> try it with your animals and tag me and let me know if it if it does the same thing. You guys try yeah, it. Yeah, we'll do it. Yeah, but also, um, so thank you guys so much for being here. Make sure to check out my episode of Share Your Scare um, on their podcast and take care of yourself, guys. Be safe, and we'll see you next week. See ya. Bye. Yay. Thank you so much. Thank you so much.